I have a Discord server, by the way. I post sneak peeks on new videos and whatnot. Feel free to join if you'd like. Thanks. Kaya is one of the legends I feel like my opinion on over the years has changed quite a lot. When I did my Kaya analysis several years ago, there were a few things that were much different at the time when it came to my thoughts on her as a legend. At the time, I did not play very much Kaya. I called her signatures difficult to use, and she just felt slow to me. Despite being a 7 speed legend, she didn't stick out in any category in particular to me. Although, that was 2 years ago. I was a big old dum dum back then. We're talking about the present here. Kaya, of course, in recent times, is one of the most popular legends played higher up, for a few reasons. We'll get to those reasons as we come across them, one of them being pretty painfully obvious as to why Kaya suddenly became so popular. But it wouldn't be a legend analysis if we didn't start off with the signatures. We'll start off with Kaya's bow sigs, as I believe they're just a bit weaker. Bow and sig is a pretty good one for Kaya. This one I can see people believing is the best one for her bow kit, which let's be honest, it probably is. It's pretty quick on startup and quite difficult to punish under some circumstances. Although it does have a pretty big blind spot underneath it, but then again you're playing bow. That's why you have downlight for your goober. Going on the bow side tig, this one isn't terrible, but it's definitely the one that I see Kaya players use the least. I'd say it's her worst sig, just about tied with another one of Kaya's sigs that I think is just slightly better. It starts off quite slow and has a wildly small hitbox, but becomes bigger at the end. The force I also wouldn't say is too great, but overall Kaya has low strength, so it's not a big deal. It's just the most noticeable on this sig. Force definitely isn't Kaya's biggest problem anyways, so this sig is still pretty solid. On to bow down sig, I mentioned that this one was quote unquote tricky to hit, but worth to do if you know how to use it. Unfortunately, I do not. Yeah, throw that in the trash. Kaya's bow down sig, while I said is up there with her bow in sig, I think might be even better than her bow in sig. This signature can be wildly good for edge guarding, and it does stick around for a while. You can even use it as a get off me tool. Since you jump up in the air, it cancels out quite a lot of moves that hit right underneath you. Pretty good for team combos too, but that's just in a 2 scenario. Or a 7v1 scenario. Pick your poison. Going on to the spear sigs, I personally think they're much better than her bow sigs. If you've played Kaya, you know why. Starting off, we have spear and sig. It reminds me quite a lot of Arcadia's spear and sig actually, although it hits more towards the top of the signature rather than just one huge hitbox like Arcadia. You can do some pretty simple combos with this signature, the side light or down light for example, although that did just get nerfed in the most recent patch. Still unjumpable with down light, but it's a bit risky nonetheless. It works as a read move too with side light. Not the best signature, not the worst. Moving on to spear side sig, this one is pretty close to being Kaya's worst signature, but it isn't that bad. It can be a bit tricky to hit, but with precise timing, you'll be rewarded. It kills decently early for Kaya, but going off the roof, it can still be pretty tough to confirm. I personally like to use a gravity cancel when coming back to stage. Works on occasions, on others I get hit by a 4 piece spear combo. On to Kaya's last signature, we're finally talking about spear down sig. What in the world makes this signature so hypnotizing? You hold this signature the entire time, people will walk into it. Not only that, but it's just such a safe signature. Use it to edge guard, use it falling off stage, use it if the enemy is just being way too aggressive. This signature seems to solve a lot of different problems that you might have when fighting an enemy. The force isn't even that bad either, making it Kaya's best signature by far. You could honestly play either weapon to succeed for Kaya, but personally, I think your spear game is much better. Spear down sig is just way too hypnotizing. Uh, but that's besides the point though. We've got to move on to the next section, Kaya's skins. She only has one new skin since the last Kaya analysis, and a bit of rearranging too, so let's go over them. God tier has Alpine and Sylvan Cleric Kaya. Alpine Kaya has stood the test of time for me, and remains to be my favorite Kaya skin, and probably in my top 10 even. Sylvan Cleric fought that title for a while too. The D&D Battle Pass was amazing, the skins absolutely don't disappoint. Pretty good tier has Kindergarten, Red Rose, Default, Aurora, and Huntress Kaya. Kindergarten looks adorable, especially the little elephant pin in her hair. Red Rose is very nice looking, although her forehead looks a bit strange. Still nice though. Default is a bit simple, but nice looking nonetheless. Aurora has a lot going on, and I can see this one being some players' favorites. The color swaps are legendary. And Huntress is pretty nice too. It stands out from the rest in the design department. Mid-tier has Athena, Kaya, and Pearl. Athena, Kaya, I think does look nice, but on Kaya, I don't think the theme fits her the best. As for Pearl, I think she's the worst crossover from the Steven Universe crossover. While the other three crossovers mimic their look from the show quite well, Pearl looks a bit off to me. Regardless, she still has some amazing signatures. Bow Insig with her Hollow Pearls and her Spear Insig with Rose Quartz. Lastly, we have Snowstalker Kaya. If you know me, I don't like when a legend has their face blocked off. I like being able to see their face when I play them, which is why Snowstalker is down there for me. It isn't bad, but just not my style, really. Overall, Kaya mostly has gray skins. I wonder what they'll do for another Kaya skin in the future. 
Maybe a progression or epic skin sometime? I would love to see that. Tier list wise, out of S, A, B, C, and D, I'd place Kaya at S tier. I mean, come on. Even after loads of nerfs, Kaya has remained on top as one of the more consistent legends. Although people really didn't seem to realize his strength until recently. Why is that? Let's be honest, it's probably because of Impala. BCX 2022. Impala pops up out of nowhere and takes the champion title by everyone's surprise. So, did this really spark the huge buzz for Kaya? I could imagine it. Looking back at my old Kaya analysis script, Kaya used to be in the bottom 10 regarding play rates. That means basically nobody was playing Kaya. She was just another Sentinel or Nash to everybody. A legend no pros really played. So, why bother? After Impala won with Kaya, her play rate skyrocketed to actually being average. Kaya got nerfed a whole bunch in different categories too, but even after those nerfs, she still stands as an extremely solid pick. Her stat lineup helps her quite a lot too. 4 attack, 4 attack, 7 defense, and 7 speed. High defense and high speed are the two stats that you could ask for the most of, like, any time. Low strength does hurt a bit sometimes, but it's completely liable to play when looking at Kaya overall. Any stance besides dex works too, more specifically attack and defense. Speed stance leaves you wildly low on attack, but it's technically playable. Then deck stance you might think could help get some combos more consistent, but I've never seen that as an issue on Kaya, especially after the Sayer Neutral Light nerf on Spear. So I would avoid deck stance primarily. So yeah, you can see why I redid the Kaya analysis. Apart from the first analysis being super low in quality, Kaya was super underrated and very underplayed at the time. Once BCX 2022 happened, people began realizing her power. Not even just Kaya either, I've seen so much more Spear representation in the last year too. Probably why we got those pretty large nerfs recently. So, that raises the completely off-topic question. Could the same thing happen to Jayun and Graysword again after BCX 2023 happened? Only time will tell! If you enjoyed this analysis, feel free to subscribe. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe later. And also feel free to like the video, it helps me out a lot. And until next time, always remember to keep on brawling!